Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. start this lecture with a thought process, we have taken birth in this earth to use the inner fire for the benefits of mankind without getting burned by it. So, uh, if you recall in the last lecture, we initiate, we initiate the discussion about the uh, one dimensional uh, combustion wave and where we have uh, found out the difference between the detonation and deflectation. And today we will continue uh, how to uh, analyze the one dimensional combustion wave. So, as I told that combustion wave will be having certain speed and uh, with which it will be traveling toward the fuel air mixtures and it depends on the type of fuel air mixtures and also the equivalence ratio. And uh, in case of deflagration we have seen that uh, if it is the, the speed of the combustion wave is uh, subsonic, we call it as a deflagration and if it is uh, greater than the sonic speed, then we call it as a detonation. And question arises practically when there will be uh, deflagration, when there will be detonation. For example, if I take a tube mixed with the fuel air mixtures right. This is fuel and oxidizer mixture right, it is being filled. If I ignite it right, as I told earlier that if this is the igniter, what will happen? This uh, kernel the ignition kernel will be moving towards that, then will it be a detonation or will it be a deflagration. Right? Because it will be moving with a subsonic speed, so therefore, it will be basically a deflagration. Now, what will happen if I close this portion, this is a close, both are open tube, this is a tube right, tube is open both the side. If I close and if this is filled with fuel oxidizer and I will ignite it, what will happen? Will it the flame will be moving with the same speed, right, combustion wave will be have a certain velocity or certain speed and it will be always moving towards the fuel and oxidizer. Therefore, we are calling it as a speed because the direction is known right. So, we can call it as a combustion wave speed right. Will it be in the same right, it will be changing, but will it be why it will be changing? Huh? Huh? Fuel air mix. This in the beginning it is a zero. There is no movement as such, so it won't be changing unless it reaches here nearby. It may change because the pressure will be built up in this region. When the flame propagate, it will be propagating. Now will be moving, right? And then toward that there will be a some pressure will develop, right? Lead pressure will develop. No, no. Why it will develop? Because I have told compression where it will be, it is a moving, it will not really compression will be taking place. But however, I will do other way around. What I will do? Let us say I will close this side, and this is fuel and oxidizer. Keep in mind that this is stationary mixed, there is no movement as such. I am not talking about that of the movement of the or, proper or the uh, movement of the fuel oxidizer mixture. Okay. 
it is just stationary mixture then what will happen i will ignite here this is your igniter right what will happen this is a closed one closed tube is closed this tube is closed right what will happen because this kernel will come and this also will go this side there will might be some mixture right and then what will happen this will be and this will be burned and this will be unburned right so that means the temperature will be very higher as this is closed the mix the what you call expansion will be taking place of the gas because temperature is higher if the temperature is higher and expansion but it is closed so what will happen it will be trying to get compressed yes or no right so if it is there then what will happen it will be trying to basically get compressed see you know the adiabatic temperature you have seen the mixture let's say 300 if it is fuel a, a methane air what will be the temperature 2200 kelvin into divided by 300 something around more than 6 times it is changing right so therefore there will be change in the pressure and then pressure will be acting like a piston as if there is a piston which is moving the wave so it will be moving at a higher velocity and it happens to be the higher than the speed of sound right what will happen detonation will occur that means there will be deflagration to detonation right will be which will be taking place but this will occur why why does it occur it occurs because what will happen there will be a compression if there is a compression right there will be shock formation and once this is the shock will be fed by what by the chemical reactions right the shock will be here somewhere and the heat is taking place here right there will be shock once it is detonation right then that will be feeding the shock are you getting the velocity will be very high and then it will be moving it lead to the detonation so therefore uh, of course it is a quite a complex process but keep in mind that whenever detonation is there there will be shock okay and it will be shock is fed by what fed by the the combustion or the heat release right which will be much higher speed than that of the whatever the natural or the shock will be there right so uh, now we will be uh, considering and uh, the one dimensional combustion wave but actually in real situation it need not to be one dimensional okay and let us say that we will say this is as a station 1 and i am considering as a this is station 2 kind of things which we will be discussing and we'll make some assumption for analyzing this thing what are those one consider that we are considering as a steady uh, combustion wave but in real situation it need not to because it is coming from the deflagration to detonation so therefore it not but we are considering it is already developed only it is moving with a detonation velocity or the speed so therefore we are considering as a steady the assumption are steady combustion wave keep in mind that when we are analyzing it we are not considering basically whether it is a deflagration or detonation we are considering it as a combustion wave that means it may be a detonation or it may be a deflagration that you keep in mind and we are also considering that the in visit adiabatic flow that means no heat although heat being released no heat is going out from here that means q is zero but however heat being generated inside right 
due to what? Due to chemical reactions, right? That we are concerned. But no heat is going from the system. If I consider this as a system, you know, if I consider this as a control volume, from this no heat is going out, <coughs> and it is inviscid. That means there is no viscous effect. Viscous is not playing an important role. And three is the no body forces. either electromagnetic or gravitational no forces are there right but however you know when the deflagration detonation which will be occurring in the supernova or some other places it will be quite complex you know supernova cosmic phenomena right so there also people are saying it is occurring because of deflagration to detonation right so but here uh, we are not considering those body forces and the four is negligible due for an interdiffusion effect. We are not considering, we may not consider the uh, basically species equation to uh, and the ideal gas right we are considering the ideal gas the gas need not to be ideal right and uh, six is the chemical reaction is being modeled by the just heat release right And then you know we are not considering the species equation because it's just you were adding some heat. Are you getting instead of chemical reactions? And another thing we are also assuming as a constant uh, properties, which is not true. That means you know Cp is a function of temperature, right? So, also the other properties which you are saying is remaining constant. So, we are not rather we are using the same uh, you know gamma value C p by C v will be using, but which is not true because the across the combustion wave there will be rise in temperature, change in density, change in pressure all those things will be taking place, we will be not considering those into account. Okay. So, with this assumption now what we will have to do, we will have to basically uh, you know invoke the conservation equation like continuity what it would be continuity that means for this one dimensional uh, what you call combustion wave between the station 1 and station 2 if you look at see this is your station 1 and this station 2 we are considering in between right. So, uh, yeah. what it would be if I say the rho 1 if I say this is basically rho 1, v 1, p 1, t 1, right, rho 2, v 2, p 2, t 2, right. Then we can relate those properties. Rho 1 is the density, v is the velocity, p is the pressure, t is the temperature, right. I can write down then as the rho 1, v 1 is equal to rho 2, v 2 is equal to mass flux right rate this is mass flux rate right from the momentum equation if you look at what it would be that will be nothing but p1 plus rho 1 v1 square is equal to p2 plus rho 2 v2 square because we are uh, not considering the body forces and it is inviscid. So, therefore, those terms are not coming which is a very simple and this is similar to what you might have uh, what you call uh, use for uh, analyzing a uh, normal software. Keep in mind that here we are considering as a combustion wave right which is one dimensional in nature. So, this type of equation you might have used there. So, energy equation what it would be? It will be uh, for a ideal gas loss. So, therefore, C p 
1 t 1 plus v 1 square divided by 2 plus q, q is nothing but your heat release uh, rate and which is uh, due to the combustion. However, in this case we are saying that it is substituted uh, by the heat, but however, we can use also uh, some for calculation purposes we can use that as a from the enthalpy balance kind of thing is equal to C P 2 T 2 plus V 2 square divided by 2 right this is your kinetic term. So, beside this uh, as it is a compressible flow, so we will have to consider the equation of states also for station 1 that will be P 1 is equal to rho 1 R T 1 and for station 2 P 2 is equal to rho 2 R T 2 right R is your specific gas constant right this is your specific gas constant so q is the heat release rate per unit mass and uh, i can write down this as uh, y i h i f i not right and where y i is the mass fraction of i species and h f i not is basically heat of formation of I s spaces. Right. I can say this is as a equation 1, this I can consider as a equation 2, this is equation 3, I can consider this as a 4 and this is equation 5. So, uh, from equation 2 I can write down or by using equation 2 we can have P 2 minus P 1 is equal to rho V 1 square minus rho 2 V 2 square. I can write down as rho 1 this would be 1 rho 1 v 1 whole square divided by rho 1 minus rho 2 v 2 whole square divided by rho 2 which is nothing but I can write down by using continuity equation this is the equation rho 1 v 1 is equal to rho 2 v 2 then I can write down as mass flux square equal to 1 by rho 1 minus 1 by rho 2. And this equation is basically you can consider this as a Rayleigh equation right. I can write down this as I can write down rho 1 v 1 square is also equal to rho 2 v 2 square is nothing but p 2 minus p 1 divided by 1 by rho 1 minus rho 2. And this equation is basically known as Rayleigh relation. I will consider this as ok let me write down here as a 6 equation number 6. And from by using this equation 6 I can basically derive the relationship for the uh, velocity at station 1 and also the velocity at station 2. Similarly, I can also uh, find out Mach number at station 1 and Mach number at station 2. So, let us that by using equation 1 6 V 1 square is nothing but your P 2 minus P 1 
rho 1 square 1 by rho 1 minus rho 2 p 2 minus p 1 rho 1 I can write down as Similarly, we can have V 2 square as P 2 minus P 1 rho 2 rho 2 by rho 1 minus 1. Now, we can express this as uh, basically in terms of Mach number, we know that Mach number is nothing but your uh, m 1 square is nothing but your v 1 square by c 1 square and c 1 square is the speed of sound is equal to c 1 which is nothing but your root over gamma r t 1 is equal to root over gamma p 1 by rho 1 right and I can write down substitute here I can I find out this will be p 2 by p 1 divided by rho 1 and this will be I am is you know let me write down here 1 minus rho 1 rho 1 divided by rho 2 into what it will be gamma p 1 divided by rho 1. So, this rho 1 will be cancel it out. So, I will get as p 2 minus p 1 divided by it became because if I take p 1 here this will be p 2 by p 1 minus 1 gamma right into 1 minus rho 1 divided by rho 2. Similarly, I can this is basically equation 9. Similarly, we can have m 2 square Mach number at station 2 square is nothing but your 1 minus p 1 by p 2. gamma. rho 2 by rho 1 minus 1. So, now we know you know we can uh, relate this pressure ratio and density ratio and gamma to the Mach number right. In other words Mach number at the both the station can be expressed in terms of pressure ratio, density ratio and gamma. Now, we will be uh, basically deriving expression for the heat release using the energy equation by using equation 3 we can have is nothing but your C p T 2 minus T 1 plus V 2 square V 1 square divided by 2 right. And uh, if you look at the C p T 2 right, what it would be can I not express in terms of pressure 
for an ideal gas we know the C p T 1 is nothing but your what is C p gamma gamma minus 1 r T 1 right is nothing but a gamma gamma minus 1 p 1 by rho 1 right yes or no. Similarly, I can write down C p T T 2 is gamma gamma minus 1 p 2 by rho 2 and from equation uh, let me say this is basically equation may be 10 it would be okay, 11. So, this is 11 by using equation 2 we can have expression for V 2 right and V 1. we can have V 1 square is nothing but here P 2 minus P 1 rho 1 plus rho 2 V 2 square divided by rho 1. And similarly, I can write down this as a basically 11, 12, this is 13, this is 14. So, V 2 square is nothing but your minus P 2 minus P 1 rho 2 minus rho 1 V 1 square divided by rho 2, this is 15. By using equation 12, 12 to 15 in equation 11 we can have q is equal to what you call gamma gamma minus 1 into p 2 by rho 2 minus p 1 by rho 1 then it will be plus half that is v 2 square right v 2 square will be nothing but your uh, p 2 minus p 1 by p 2 right minus plus rho 1 v 1 square divided by rho 2 and uh, minus p 2 minus p 1 rho 1 minus rho 2 v 2 square by rho v 1. Okay. Keep in mind that this will be cancel it out, this will be cancel it. Why? as to equation 1 that is continuity right because that will cancel it out. So, then finally, what you will get you will get basically q is equal to gamma gamma minus 1 p 2 by rho 2 minus p 1 by rho 1 it will be minus half I will take p 2 minus p 1 as a common p 2 minus p 1 I will get 1 by rho 1 plus 1 by rho 2. This is basically known as the Rankine Huguenite Huguenite relation which is one of the most important relationship in the explosion and the flame right because flame can lead to explosion right so this is a very important relationship you should uh, we'll be using it and this is 16 
uh, with this we will stop over here and we will discuss in the next lecture.